Hello everybody, Tom Cosm here. Bit of a different video for you today. I wanted to share a project that I've been working on for the last three or four weeks with a group of other people about bringing awareness to the kauri trees in New Zealand which are getting slowly screwed by dieback. Um, if you're not familiar with dieback, it's a, it's a fungal infection. It gets into the roots and it sucks all the resources that the roots need. They make the tree, tree appear to be quite unhealthy. It gets up into the bark and then it causes infections and then all the sap comes out and, and it spreads across the forest. It's really, really bad. Nobody has any cure for it or anything yet. Um, the only way is prevention and a lot of people are going into the bush and seeing these amazing trees and kind of not washing their feet afterwards or not going to the cleaning stations and it, it is just getting spread around and around and because it's this really slow process the um, it, it doesn't really resonate with people's fast-paced lives at the moment so um, yeah Ogilvy really kind of came together got their creative teams together and they're like how can we get this Thing, which is slowly killing one of the key idols of New Zealand into the public awareness system and um, yeah it's been a, a lot of great fun a lot of great fun we've got the Philharmonic Orchestra here the Auckland City Council very kind giving us consents to go out there weather permitting you know it, it's, it's been a, a bit of a rush up until now but now we're at the end of the year we're ready to show people and um, if you're interested in listening to this uh, go to a carry tree dot, uh, sorry a carry tree cries dot co dot nz um, you can actually see this and this this tree is actually writing the music and that's where I get into this um, they, they approached me going hey can you take these scans from these amazing syrup cameras we've got which do these really long pans macro scans of trees can you take this video footage identify the dieback find the patterns and then somehow convert that into the musical pitch range of the instruments that we have and I went oh yes I can because that's something I've been really enjoying lately if you've been following my channel is the nature to conversion thing um, you can see here this is all my techie stuff on the left hand side and then these are these awesome rigs scanning the trees as we go down so this is the website go and visit it go and have a look check it out um, share it if you feel like it it's a pretty 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 good cause bit of a time lapse there so coming up what we have is the raw video that I got from these uh, syrup cameras and um, I believe it's about to happen now. So this is what we got. This is a beautiful, perfectly scanned, steady paced video of a character tree. And you can see the die back there. Um, you know, it's 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 the, the kind of the grey areas or the yellow areas. So first thing I did, a little bit of a time lapse here, is uh, I got the video playing and, and Max for Live. I use things like Jitter and stuff to kind of do weird things. Um, I believe here I create a... Uh, yeah kind of a hue saturation contrast type thing just to really bring out those areas you can see they're in yellow quite a lot and then I use some thresholding to just pick out the yellows and we get quite a quite a white static thing which isn't that beautiful it kind of looks like this it's downgraded quite a lot because the algorithms that do the pattern detection it can be a little bit heavy but it doesn't really matter in this case because what we can do next is use some gentle smoothing so this is the same thing but just with a bit of smoothing and you can see it's quite easy to identify the different areas of where the dieback is. So again here it is kind of going through this recognition it's finding the blobs it's, it's assigning them colors uh, it's a little bit messy at this stage again this is kind of a moving forward stage of, of how I progress um, but what we did manage to get is uh, get it down to a thin strip and it takes about a bar for it to go from the bottom to the top and this is analyzing the most prominent parts of the dieback in that middle script so here's the bass kind of picking up where it is and playing notes so the horizontal axis is where the notes are the um, the actual pitch or the mass of the dieback in that particular area determines the volume and the playing style and that also syncs up with the um, horizontal axis as well to determine the duration of the note and there's a bit of a click track there just so they can all play in time so this is kind of what the scanning process look like you can see up on the top left it's pretty familiar but we have three graphs down the bottom here so the bottom one which is in green is obviously picking up the uh, horizontal axis and that's determining the pitch of the note so that's kind of generating a pitch uh, the red one is uh, generating the up and down axis so that's 
that doesn't change too much but that's really good for things like velocity and duration and whatnot and then of course we have the blue one and the blue one determines the mass so when it finds an area or a blob in in the tree depending on how infected that particular blob is that mass goes up and I, I use that for volume and also for the duration of the notes and um, it also the mass also changes the playing style of the instrument as well so it's all pretty much automated at the moment you can see notes being split down in the keyboard in the bottom there um, everything's a little bit crazy at the moment we wanted to get as little shaping as possible for this here's a bit of a time lapse of me experimenting around uh, it's all sped up, kind of recording notes into Ableton Live of what this tree is actually producing as far as notes go, duration, velocity, and pitch. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's been all pretty good. There was a little bit of human snapping I had to do. I had to get things into quantized 30 second notes because, you know, the musical score that would get generated for the musicians would just be chaos. I actually did it for fun and the musical score you just look at it and it looks like uh, something Aphex Twin would write or something. So here's the main screen, this is kind of the main uh, unit that was there on the day analyzing all five trees. You can see the notes on the right hand side getting generated by the particular bands and where the dieback blobs are most prominent. Um, so that was quite a neat thing to have, to have like an all-in-one space there and then we move along to this is what the musicians got so they all had five individual ipads and they got musical notation score generated coming up so they didn't have to you know snap to any of the fancy max for live or max msp plugins they actually had proper musical notation score that they could play um, which was really really good and what amazed me was uh when i did generate uh some scores for them um i was really worried that they were going to be all over the place i mean you can't see it here because this is the bass, but things like the uh, bassoon and stuff, I had triple clefs and alto clefs all over the place, trying to keep it all single one lines. Uh, there's some really tricky rests and notes in there, but I'm sure it's nothing for a high tier musician like these guys did, and they did an amazing job. The studio recording, when I finally got to hear it, actually hear what the tree wrote, whilst a top tier orchestra played it, it was... It was actually quite a magical experience so that's pretty much the end result this is what they were seeing in the previous video at the start so they all had their scores moving that was synced to the trees on the main two computers and uh, yeah the tree pretty much composed hey I'm dying and it's really sad the overall piece is about I believe it's a minute 30 so it's a it's a pretty small re uh, requiem uh, if you like but um, yeah it was a lot of fun all these different algorithms, things like the bass and the cello, uh, there were some trees that had lots of lines, like this tree here is lots of static stuff moving around, but there were lots of nice lines that the, the bass could kind of follow and keep foundations. I thought the cello and the double bass would be good foundations, they kind of represent the tree in a way, and then the bassoon, which has always been known as a, uh, a woodwind in instrument that can produce trees and forests and pixies and all those kind of uh, uh, very nice fantasy kind of uh, effects. And then we had things like the flute and the violin who were taking these really intense ones you can see here. So they could jump all over the place and do things like that. Uh, as far as quantization goes, we wanted we really wanted to minimize the impact of uh, human shaping, if you like. So I, I kept that in mind here, trying different ways to get these things sounding good together without shaping it too much. We did end up um, coming to the conclusion that, uh, yeah, uh, quantizing to 30 second notes is ideal just because the musical score would be totally crazy if we quantized to 64 or even 128th notes um, and we did do a, a few pitch shifting things so it is in a C minor scale mostly just to get that sad somber effect and then it moves down to the A flat major 7 um, now and then just to give it a, a little bit of a contrast so that's the kind of gist of how I made this patch. It took me probably a couple of weeks. Um, obviously feeding back with the teams, uh, feeding back with uh, Og Ogilvy, uh, the having good meetings with the orchestra and the musicians, knowing what they're not able to play. That was an interesting one, you know, some of these, some of these instruments can't do trills in these notes or the range is too big, so they give me feedback and I could turn that into some kind of code, put it into the system to make sure that it wouldn't actually generate impossible notes uh, for them but as I said they 
nailed it. They picked it up. I think I think they even just picked it up, had a glance, went, right, let's go. And they stuck to 60 BPM exactly, which was really important because they, the uh, panning of the trees was uh, quite consistent in that. Yeah, so that's about it, really. That's a, that's a bit of a rundown of an explanation of it. And um, I can't wait to use this in the future for something else. Basically, now have a machine that can take anything you feed into it and analyze it and turn it into either classical mutation um, notation or um, mini clips in Ableton Live where you could own your own synths and make a dubstep track, dubstep track out of or something like that. Yeah, cool. So I'm going to leave it there. Again, go to akaricries.co.nz if you want to learn more about this. Um, yeah, they've got a bunch of info there, social media links, and uh, there will be more videos uploaded uh, of the making of because there was a lot of work in this. It's really good. And all the people were very passionate about it. So I love, I love projects like that where everyone's really coming together and uh, made something quite special. So that's what I've been doing for the last four weeks. You might notice I've been hermiting and not putting out tutorial videos or music. It's because I've been doing this because I love it. Anyway. And uh, just one final mention, I really want to give a shout out to Jean-Marc uh, Pelletier. Um, he came up with a bunch of libraries called Civ.jit, which are made for analysis, pattern, pattern recognition, finding shapes, and doing all that, those kind of things. It's an open library, and without it, uh, it would have taken me a much, much longer time. So I just want to thank him, and if you guys are interested in Jitter and Max and that kind of thing, definitely get this library. Go into your Pax Explorer, get it, grab it, put it on your computer and uh, start playing around with it. It's quite amazing. So I'll leave it there. Goodbye.